Welcome to an artist life. I live by the sea in New England, and I love to share my quiet, simple life of art and garden and home. So I hope you will feel that you can come and join me. Welcome to an artist life. Good day everyone and welcome to this week's vlog. We'll probably be getting up to about the same as we did last week. We'll have an outing, play with some artwork, uh, possibly have a little walk or just a gaze at the sea. I think this week though instead of doing a, an antique trip, I the spring has been in the air so I thought why not uh, take a trip to Country Garden, one of my favorite garden centers on the Cape. Uh, I'm hoping there'll be outdoor plants, but there's a possibility there are no pansies or anything yet. So at least at Country Garden, they have a lovely greenhouse, so we could at least come away with some house plants or something fun and living to uh, plant and have fun with. So uh, yeah, so this week I think we'll do an outing, and we'll play with some artwork, and we'll look at the sea. So more of the same, but sometimes that's just what we need. All right, let's get started with this week's vlog. Country Garden. You can see the spinning turbine in the background and the outdoor greenhouses and the outdoor area where there will be perennials and shade-loving perennials and things coming in a few months most likely. And outside here you can see this greenhouse towards the front is where we'll be going which has lovely lovely houseplants and there's some lovely outdoor statuary and chiminea outdoor uh, fireplaces, some nice outdoor furniture and things, little pathways. Oh, these doors and uh, shutters are new. These are kind of sweet. I'll have to check these out. They're not antique, though. They definitely are made to look old, so I'm curious what they cost. Lovely uh, finish. Two twenty nine. It's a bit pricey, but I mean, I suppose that is a lot of uh, hard work. I'd probably be more... Uh, I tend to use an old door myself. In fact, I have some old doors at Old King's Cottage I could probably bring out to the garden. So here we are coming into the front door. <laughs> welcome to the beach to remind us that, welcome to the beach house, I should say, to remind us that uh, we definitely are by the sea. Oh, and look at the sweet little bunny statue. Of course, they will be lots of uh, bunny things probably as Easter is on its way. And the little snail. I like this uh, water watering can fountain when I saw this at uh, Christmas time. And uh, some of you may recall I took you here at Christmas time and there were some lovely uh, decorations and actually they even had more plants then which makes sense because people were probably uh, enamored to buy plants as gifts even though uh, this past Christmas <laughs> didn't quite turn out I, I think as many people hoped. And here we have I really do love how they've made this display with the old pallets. Of course, that's a, that's a lot of work. They had to take the, I know with these pallet walls, you have to take the wood off the other side and then move it to the front and hammer it back on. But these are really sweet little planters and it says it's a local artist, which is really nice. I love, they're really good here about having products that are made locally to help support uh, our local economy. And it isn't, it's not too bad. Twenty-one ninety-nine. I mean, that's a lot of cutting and staining. I really do love the uh, this heron weather vane. It's about three hundred, but I would love to have it at the at Bunny Hall. We have so many herons and snowy egrets that visit us each summer. In fact, we've had one that stayed throughout the winter, and all these darling little pots. Now we'll walk out to the greenhouse, which, oh, these are sweet. Oh, and a cyclamen, that's lovely. These are nice. I'm sort of always on the fence about these things that are meant to keep your house plants watered. I've never really had much success, but these are really quite pretty. I love that blue glass one. Um, I could always give them a try. Some Phalaenopsis orchids, a pretty red bench. So let's go out into the greenhouse. 
Uh, it's such a love, uh, it's so warm today. And then of course in the greenhouse, it feels really like summer. It's just so nice to be around so many green things. And that big palm, I can't recall what variety of palm that is, but I know it's been here forever. If anyone knows what variety that palm is with that type of uh, leaf, uh, say so in the comments. So let's start looking at all the lovely plants. And look at these lovely African violets, both of the standard size and these little miniature ones would make adorable, adorable fairy gardens. The colors are so pretty. I always have this vision of having a little um, plant theater full of different African violets, but they need a lot of moisture more so than I often can give in our house. Um, and the Kalankoa or Kalancho, and here we have the most beautiful Tradescantia. Look at the color of this Tradescantia. It's the most beautiful pinky purple. I'm gonna have to think about one of those, especially as I'm sort of in a purple mood today. And lovely hanging plants, some more African violets and some bamboos. Oh, and cyclamens. Uh, now these are uh, cyclamen persicums, um, which are lovely house plants, but I'm always looking for the cyclamen, I think they're called halophonums. You see them a lot in the UK grown outside, and I have trouble finding them here in the US, but there are a variety that will grow in our climate. Oh, and lovely lavenders, which, oh, the scent of summer, and some pretty palms. Oh, and I love how they carry this line, they're called bambinos. They're just really shrunken down small versions of all sorts of houseplants, shade loving as well as succulents. Like see this darling little, I'm pretty sure this is a begonia. My, I'm not sure if anyone else knows in the comments, let me know, but it looks like a type of begonia. And uh, these sweet little sizes are, um, they're only $3.99, which I think is a really good uh, price to start out with some small plants. And again, all of these little bambino size are great for doing fairy gardens. In fact, I often find uh, amazing little ferns and, uh, and such when I want to do a more um, shade a flower or fairy garden. So let's just look back at all the beauty. I'm going to try to go slowly because uh, I know I didn't, uh, I'm always trying to get better with filming, but um, I just want people to be able to have a chance to look as if they're actually at this shop. These beautiful crotons. Uh, and of course, another little ceramic bunny sticking his head out of the crotons, which are another good house plant because they have that beautiful splash of ready orange. And, uh, are these anthuriums? Oh, and, I, and again, here's another shot of the beautiful palm, which I cannot recall what variety this is, but you know, I've been coming here for years and I feel like for the longest time this has been here and it's an elaborate root system is always growing out over the pots. And of course at Christmas time, if you recall, uh, they had it wrapped in lights, although I guess they have the lights now as well, but I felt like it was decorated more for Christmas. But yes, I'm gonna try to go slowly just so that you really get that feeling of sort of being in the in the greenhouse looking at wonderful things and look at all the beautiful phalaenopsis orchids. Now when I had my flower shop, uh, the phalaenopsis were sort of the main variety that we carry just because they're really foolproof as far as someone taking care of them and they flower forever. And look at the beautiful, they, and since they have such a large blossom, like look at it, it looks like splatters of paint. It's like little Monet's or Surat paintings and the colors are just magical. I mean, you could almost pause <laughs> any one of those shots I was just taking it and have a great uh, opportunity to do a watercolor study. Oh, and I can smell the wonderful herbs over here. Uh, maybe think about grabbing some herbs to do a little herb garden, tarragon, and but it's mint and chives and rosemary, and I have those things already. Uh, in fact, some of my uh, chives are already <laughs> starting to grow. I have some that grow through the the gravel on my terrace and they've already started to come up even though it's uh, on the seaside. So we'll think about that. But they do smell heavenly. It's wonderful to be in the warmth of this greenhouse and smell the mint. You can imagine in the lavender, you can pretend it's June. And there's a little um, azalea and of course primroses. I'm, I won't be able to leave without at least one primrose. I always like to add at least one to the garden and I'd like to get one flowering now to put inside. Like, as you recall, last week I had two primrose that I had dug out of the garden to forest that we've planted with our hyacinth and our daffodil for our planting last week. Oh, I love, oh, this is an interesting variety of peperomia. And this is, I love this, it's sort of the uh, 
This is sort of the style you're used to seeing in the Peperomia plant, but I, this is such a beautiful variety with such a striking reddish purple leaf. And only $5.99, and when you consider how much effort and work it goes into making this beautiful plant, $5.99 for a bit of uh, living art is quite a bargain when you think about it. But I love this. I have not seen this type of Peperomia before. It's really unique, and I love that chartreuse color. Peperomia Happy Bean. I like that name. It does look like a, a bean. I have to think about that one. It's so pretty. And I love that sort of chartreuse green color. You could make an arrangement of just those three varieties of Peperomia. Oh, and they do have a, a, a nice little collection of bonsai. Um, so pretty. I'll try to pan slowly so you can see them. A little jade into evergreens. I actually once tried to, uh, I bought a boxwood years ago and trimmed it up and kept it in the house for a couple years and I take it out in the summer as a bonsai. And then one year I stuck it in the ground just to keep it over winter. That was at Old King's, my antique cottage I shared and I left it and I just forgot about it. And you should see it. I should show it to you in a vlog. It's humongous. It's twice as tall as I am and I trim it into a big uh, sort of oblong egg shape. It had made me wish I had put the uh, more boxwoods along the front of that house so I could have a beautiful evergreen hedge there, but uh, boxwoods are not inexpensive, so. <laughs> but yes, what started as a bonsai became a massive tree, which will happen if you don't keep them trained. So let's keep looking along here. Again, it's just so lovely to be amongst green things. So I'm hoping if any of you are still feeling your not able to get out, just being able to have a little browse around plants, house plants is always fun. And I like how they have the uh, low light plants here. Oh yes, you know, I so, I used to have a wonderful staghorn fern and I need to get another one. It's only 19, that's only $20. I used to have it and it was mounted on um, a big piece of driftwood. I used to have them in my flower shop and I had that one for years. I don't remember what happened to it. it must have gotten lost along the uh, way from house to house. And of course they carry this wonderful line of these fairy flowers, uh, all these miniaturized versions of uh, both annual and perennial plants that I love using in fairy gardens. This is, look at the beautiful reds and gold on this. Beautiful Lismachia, which of course you can grow outdoors as well, but this is such a pretty sort of miniaturized version. And look at that yellow flower with a deep red throat. You could design an entire little miniature garden around that. And I could imagine that when you are uh, when you break apart your flower or your fairy garden, you could put that out in your regular garden. I'm assuming it's a hardy variety. So let's pan along here and see. Oh, there's so many little ceramic ceramic bunnies peeking in and out. Now here is that same sort of bambino line, but it's their succulents. So see the little diminutive size, all the beautiful shapes. And, uh, oh, this is pretty. As I'm in my sort of purpley red mode today, that little purpley sort of cactus looking succulent could be pretty. I might be able to sort of design a fairy garden around that. I'll have to think about that. And as we're on the more sunny side of the greenhouse, of course we have more succulents. So we'll have another, oh, these are beautifully colored. Those purples and the dusty pinks. That's what's so wonderful about succulents is you just have so much variety in just their color and just their leaf form. Really beautiful. And some of these are almost better uh, viewed from the top. Not that they're not lovely this way, but let's see if we look down on the top of one. See, look at the variety of color and leaf form from those. And yet really succulents are so easy to take care of and so easy to propagate. The pinky, muted, the blue, and that orangey, burnt sienna color. Really lovely. How much is this collection? $29. So $30. That's not bad. I mean, they've done all the work. You can just pop that as it is, it is in a darling little container, and then you can break it up as they get bigger. Cacti. And see the sun shining in on the cacti really is a lovely day. I'll try to go as slow as I can and maybe even slow it down in post so you can enjoy it. Oh, and I always love this cactus they have that has been here forever. It just goes on and on and on to the ceiling. And they have it 
tied to this pergola. It's interesting here too, they have these little metal things that stick out. These are the little heat elements that keep the uh, air warm. So let's have a little pan back towards the lovely little fairy flowers, which I love. I think I'll probably get something from here, maybe to go with the purple cactusy succulent. We'll see what we can find. Oh, this is, these are adorable alpine strawberries. You know, I've wanted to get alpine strawberries just to, to see if I could grow them for their fruit. And of course I love an air plant and I, I swear I look at these every time because uh, I always think about getting one. I mean, $13 does seem a lot. Uh, and uh, you know, if you're in the South, these just are hanging from the trees, but uh, there's just something about it. And I love how they take the little sea urchins and then put the air plants inside. And uh, air plants, I think they're called Tillandsia, I think. I, I'm sure there's uh, some information around here. I think they're actually part of the Bromeliad family, but they're just amazing to me. And they have so many different colors. And the fact that you just have to give them a little mist or soak now and again, and you can just, they're just great plants for decorating so many different forms and colors. And I think they can go very modern or antique. Look at the beautiful, I mean, look at the colors of this, that purple, and of course I'm in my purple mode today. So I might have to think about that one. They're just fun to, uh, you know, you can use them in both a modern and a very rustic way. I love to see them against the old wood. And in fact, maybe this uh, summer we should get some driftwood from our beach and do a fun scavenge. You know, and I'm going to pause um, in edit so that if anyone wants to read the great information they have here on how to take care of your air plants, I'm going to slow it down and that way you can just kind of pause it at home. But look at this big, large variety and with the small ones in the old driftwood shelf. It just, I just love the rusticity of it. It almost makes me think of Italy or south of France. And of course they go wonderfully with seashells. <laughs> I have to get really missed mine a bit more because we do, even though we live on the sea, uh, our air can be quite dry. And they have a lovely collection of pots, quite a selection of um, orchid pots. Now I love to get pots from thrift shops and antique shops, but you know, when you need to come in and just find something that's the right color or the shape, uh, a garden center is the perfect place to do it. And I love this green. And I really, if I get to do the kitchen over, I really want to do green and blue together because I really want the green with the, the blue and white china. Like, see how pretty that blue and white looks with a, a bit of almost a limey green and then a, this lovely sagey avocado green. I just think they look really pretty together. Now we have uh, some funny little characters and I, I love these tiny little um, Asian people playing chess or smoking pipes. I just love those for fairy gardens. And of course, uh, in honor of our Philip at Lalande, a sweet little hedgehog. Of course, in honor of myself, because heavens, I've been sketching hedgehogs since I could draw, really. But this is a sweet little one, isn't it? Oh, and here's another example of uh, the air plants. They just look so pretty in a little container and against that driftwood. I really want to do maybe a little shadow box with the driftwood and maybe a little bit of antique uh, or of one of my dollhouse pieces or something along those lines. So let's looking back at our, oh, look at this pitcher plant. I love, love uh, plants, carn carnivorous plants. And this pitcher plant, which I've grown the pitcher plant that grows up from the ground, but this is the sort of hanging variety. It's like little vases hanging off that catch the flies inside. But this is a beautiful variety, uh, be beautiful specimen. And look at how big the actual vases, the picture itself, look how large that is. It's quite amazing. Look at all the lovely hyacinths and tulips and of course beautiful primrose. Have to pick out the perfect color primrose. I really like these white and yellow ones. Now uh, let's stroll out here. Now it's funny to think right now it's so barren and empty but in a few weeks this place will be acres of perennials and vegetables and annuals and roses and all kinds of trees. So I will definitely take us back here. So let's have a look at what we have. I couldn't resist getting this lovely Meyer lemon because look at how many lemons have already started to form on it. And the scent is amazing. And it already has some of the blossoms open so I can uh, take care of those when I get home. So I always like to have one quick look at the koi before we head on home. So let's have a little lovely drive home and listen to some music.
because I'm not taking us for a walk in the village. I thought today's quick little snippet of a walk in this Sunday video would just be me coming through the tail end of our wood around to the open and clearing, which I've taken you on this walk before, but I know I may have some new followers. That opens up onto our neighbor's field and then goes down to another sea view we have, which is of a small harbor, just off our larger harbor that our house sits upon. Now all week we've had sunny days and I surely could have taken us on one of those days where the sun was beating down. But yet today is just a lovely day to walk in the wood because it's really warm. It's 60 Fahrenheit for us. But the overcast is actually quite good for filming. So to hear the bird song and to come away from the heavy crash of the waves of the main beach and down to the meandering path of the small harbor and you can see there in the center there's a little island which sometimes becomes a tiny peninsula depending on the level of the tide but this is a lovely spot to kayak which i can kayak to from our main beach just hop in the main bit of the sea and head out and then come to this little inlet but look what a lovely sketching spot. And you can see the variation of landscape in the distance, how it gets softer as it fades into the background. So if we were making that with chalks or pastels, we would uh, smudge those out a bit more in the background and use a bit more bold, sharp color in the foreground. <laughs> So this is just a snippet of a walk for this week's vlog, but as I was out, I thought it would be fun to share a tiny bit of a walk I like to take, which is through our wood. Oh, and I don't know if you can hear, but the rain is just starting. I love that sound when suddenly you're out and the rain is just beginning to come. Now we can hurry back under the cover of the wood and quickly follow the path back home to Bunny Hall. Let's go. Just quickly as we went to the canopy cover of the woodland, I, these are the type of things that I often fill my pockets with as we walk. I love these type of lichens. They're like a sphag of moss attached to the twigs. These are great for fairy gardens or just uh, putting in the plants in general and see these beautiful specimens of lovely moss. I'll often take a section of this, like that, and take it home and put it in a sweet little terracotta pot. Just keep it not out of direct sunlight and add a little water and it will spread and last nicely. Now I'm not sure if you're allowed to take moss in general woods, but as this is our property, I, I don't feel bad about doing it. But can you hear the uh, rain? It's coming down hard enough now that it's coming through the canopy of the trees. There's our big tree that I love that hopefully one day I'll build a big circular bench around. But up in the canopy, the water is, the rain is coming down. So let's grab our treasures and run back home. Now back to earlier in the week when I brought the plants back from our lovely outing to Country Garden and the fun of planting up some new houseplants. So these are the lovely finds we got today. I got this beautiful little peperomia. Hopefully the sun is showing it off. See all the lovely little tubules on the top and then the beautiful red stems, reddish purple. I sort of had a reddish purple theme today. 
And then I love a begonia. I thought this was a beautiful begonia. So I think these two are destined to be friends in a container. And then sticking with my purplish theme, I got this, this isn't this Tradescantia beautiful? Look at how vibrant that purple is. I think it's also called a zebra plant sometimes, uh, but it's such a beautiful color. And I actually might have a plan for this for next week. So for this week, I might just keep it in this pot and pop it into a blue and white container just to enjoy until I'm ready to do it. And this wonderful little succulent, which I forget the Latin for this. It's like a little cactus. This little succulent is actually destined to go with this little. Look at from the fairy garden that they always carry at that uh, at country garden. They had a little crane's bill. Now it's interesting, in this country we call the, ger the wild geranium, we call it a crane's bill or a wild geranium in this country, uh, but it is actually a geranium, uh, I think it's a maculata, uh, so in England you're more likely to call it by that name. Um, and then the, the pelagoniums, which we actually call geraniums in this country, are the annuals that you, like the red geranium you often see, which we pot out, those are annuals. And they're called geraniums, but they're, I think they're actually not a geranium. But So this is a little uh, fairy crane's bill, or uh, geranium maculatum. And this, which actually doesn't need, um, it can do okay in uh, uh, sun and shade. So I really kind of wanted to have this fairy, get gar this and this succulent cactus together in a little fairy garden, but I'm not sure if the amount of sun this needs is going to be okay for that. So I'm going to try it out and we'll see. So I'll, we'll make these two darling things into a new little fairy garden. And then I couldn't resist. I had to get another primrose. And this beautiful primrose is actually going to go with our um, wonderful Meyer lemon I bought, which I'll show you in a second. I didn't want to bring it out because it's quite warm, but I didn't want the wind to hurt it. And then I also got, with my pink, purple theme, I grabbed some more seeds. These uh, really beautiful purple snap peas. Uh, now, unfortunately, when you cook these, the, the pea pod doesn't stay purple, but I mainly eat uh, these type of peas uh, raw. So sometimes if you get, pick them young enough, you can eat the uh, the skin. Um, but they're just pretty. I mean, while you're having it in the garden, why not enjoy the pretty flower? And then I've got some new little, new little wooden. I like to, I'm trying to replace all my plastic um, little plant tags with wooden ones over over time. And uh, I just thought these were a good size. And these, I want to slowly have these. These are beautiful metal plant labels. See with a beautiful slice of copper. So it was $12.99, so $13 for eight of these. And then I'll probably use, um, so I don't have to write on it all the time, I'll probably use uh, clear tape and I'll write on write what the item is this year and then put clear tape over it so that I can take it off and reuse these each year. But if I get these every year, you know, in time I'll have enough of these to kind of put around because I would love to eventually have plant stakes around because I often forget names of things or what's planted where in the spring. So these I could see leaving these out year round. Um, so with what we have here, let's just see if we can uh, make some fun things. I think I'm going to plant these together. I'm thinking I'm going to stick this in a pot with the uh, the Meyer lemon because it's a bit of spring inside and then when I take it outside uh, Meyer lemon out on the terrace for the summer I'll just dig this out or leave it in and then put it in the landscape um, so uh, yeah so let's get our let's clear this off and replace it with pots do the do, do the next thing maybe we'll do so I think I'm going to actually start we'll start with this I think I'm going to save this Tradescantia for next week I'm just going to leave it in its can its plastic nursery container and put it in a pretty blue container and we'll just enjoy it this week and then that way I can take it out if I choose to uh, use it next week for a fun planter so I guess we'll just use a simple uh, blue planter for that with a little help of magic Let's see we can just pop that in there and this way I can enjoy it this week it looks pretty inside Look at the purple on that, isn't it lovely? And then um, we can enjoy that inside and then next week we can take it out and possibly use it for something. So I think next I want to plant up the, uh, the begonia and the peperomia. So I think we'll get the pot for that. And uh, see, won't these look adorable in here? And then um, to add to the front of it, I think we're going to do, um, I think I'm going to use the little moss and the sticks we found in the woods and that will just be placed here. Um, so we'll pot that up next. And then I think for the final planting, I want to do the little um, fairy garden for this. So uh, this isn't really going to be that exciting. So it's just going to, I'm just going to put soil in this and then I'll put this together and we'll put moss on it and I'll share that with you when it's done. So for now, let's clear this all away and have the, um, the stuff to do the fairy garden.
So I thought for the fairy garden, if you'll recall, we made a little animal fairy garden at winter for Christmas and I used this darling little fox, which is actually a Christmas ornament, but I often leave some of my animal um, Christmas ornaments out year round because I love animals, so I'm always using them in little things. And I took his little chair and I have this darling little bird bath I bought at Christmas at Country Garden and maybe a bit of coral that we've had forever. And actually, it, it was, it's been warm enough that some of our um, Semper Vivans, our hen and chicks, uh, the perennial succulent that can handle our winter, I had grabbed a couple of those out of the ground because I thought they would look lovely with that color. And then with the purple of the, uh, the uh, crane's bill. So I have, this has a drainage hole, so it'll go in there. I'm just going to put some soil in. And I'm using seed starting mix again because I really like this mix. It's really rich. And then I had mixed, I usually mix in some sand to make it a little bit more free draining for the succulents. So what I was thinking is if we, let's see, if we think about our little fellow is going to be sitting on here like this. And uh, he's going to, maybe I'll put this as the center like that. And uh, then we can kind of think about where we want the plant. So maybe this would be more like a shrub here. And maybe this could be behind that. And then I can fill in with the Semper Vivans here and then put moss around the outside. So something along those lines. Let's, let's go along those lines here. And I love the, uh, the little, I'm really a sucker for the marketing of these little fairy plants because this has the sweetest little storyline in it. So I'll just read that to you now. Fairy flowers. Bell's Pink Cranes Bill. An angel of a fairy with a gentle spirit and a beautiful voice, Bell spreads cheer wherever she goes. With its soft gray-green leaves and its gorgeous pink blossoms, her favorite flower has been known to spread joy as well. Bell can't get enough of her charming creeper. If you listen very closely, you may faintly hear her singing, You Are My Sunshine. She claims it's directed at her little ones, but they suspect it just might be intended for her tiny crane's bill. And of course, I was even more drawn to this because my own uh, dear, dearly departed mother used to sing You Are My Sunshine to me all the time, and uh, we even had it played at her funeral. So of course, I was a sucker to uh, get this crane's bill, both for its beauty and uh, with this lovely story. All right, let's get back to making our fairy garden. Then we can stick our little bird bath in there. We'll take our succulent, which I think is going to be happy. So it's like the tall bit back here, almost tree-like. I'm just going to stick some of these little Semper Vivans down in here. And I'm hoping that the, uh, the amount of sun I need for these aren't going to be too much for the uh, cranes bill, but we'll see. And then we can put our little chair here. But before we do that, let's put the moss around it. And as I mentioned before, this is preserved moss, but um, preserved reindeer moss. But now, uh, because I wouldn't use the moss I find in the uh, in the woods for this because it would not want to be in the sun like this is going to be in the sun. So I'll put the moss around, so simple. The Cranesville doesn't look happy in the amount of sun I'm giving it, or um, if I give it a little less sun and see how the succulents do, it's all really just a, to try it out. And often I make these gardens to just enjoy for a couple of months and then I change them out because obviously these some of these pieces were used in the uh, Christmas fairy greenhouse I made. We have our little fellow on there, enjoying his time. Now, do we like the stick in there, or do we like the coral in there? Actually, I think the coral competes. So let's pop this down in there. So now it's almost like a little lawn, and then our little bit of stick and uh, naturally growing lichen, and I'm going to leave that in there too, the needle. And look how adorable is that for a sweet little uh, animal fairy garden to enjoy. And it's a great, basically for Easter, I often just decorate by making little planters anyway. So this will be sort of my, one of my spring Easter, let's enjoy the coming season. So uh, there you go. And as we are in our creative mode, let's move from fairy gardens to this week's sketch of Lady and her animal. So for today's illustration, we are going to keep working in our series of ladies and animals. And uh, 
again, in my usual way, I just start sketching out. Now I've had an idea and I've done some other previous sketches. So working from those previous sketches, I just start scribbling out shapes and lines and uh, then start filling in the character. And I uh, actually uh, missed a little bit of <laughs> footage in between these two, but here you can see this is the final stage. I think I had about four or five layers of sketches. So this is the final stage of the sketch where I start filling in with the chalk. And I, again, I underpaint with just solid colors, uh, you know, the base line color for what I want to build up, the pinks and the peach and the uh, ginger hair and the yellow base for the pug. And then just kind of go in and start adding highs and lows. And as this is a study, of course, it won't have the detail of the final uh, digital oil piece, but I'm also, I really do like the pop art and fun, uh, bold color of the chalk sketches. And I know some of you actually even prefer the chalk sketches, so I'm going to keep sharing them with you. And I, when I make the final piece available, I will also uh, do the graphic design for the chalk piece on products as well as the final piece and so uh here we are just adding some background now, obviously i did the pinks and the reds for her hair and um, outfit so i wanted to counterbalance balance that with the uh, bluey greens in the background uh, because it really helps make those colors pop as they are complementary and uh, really having fun with this uh series with ladies and animals and i've always enjoyed doing and painting the figure and of course, I always enjoy doing animals. So uh, what's been fun with uh, so far with these sort of portraits of both an animal and a lady, I like it to feel as if the portrait could be of the animal or of the lady. Um, and I've also been toying with the idea of uh, maybe making a, or at least sharing some of the little storylines I write for each of these characters. So that might be something I might try in the future. So um, that's uh, this week's sketch and I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, and I have worked on, this is the just about finished uh, digital oil of one of the previous sketches I shared. Here you can see it in its sketch stage in which I shared the last time. And here is its current uh, digital oil mixed with oil pastel stage, which is just about finished. When I do finish it, I will share it and let you know it's on, uh, it's for sale and it's available on things. Um, but I'm still just tweaking some of the things, but I did work on just about finishing it this week and I wanted to show you because now we are getting and we're starting a nice collection of uh, portraits of ladies and animals. So I hope you're enjoying it. All right, let's get on with the rest of the video. For another fun little snippet of a walk in this week's vlog, I thought we'd head down. Now we don't completely have the, the complete flats as I often mention, where the harbor drains almost completely and I can just walk across and find all sorts of treasures and most of the sand is exposed. It's still, it's a lovely warm day. It's in the 60s Fahrenheit you can see how much the dock is exposed. If we were to walk down there, we could almost walk right down to the edge. And you can see Algernon Siegel is on his flat rock. I'm not sure where his lovely young bride is off to. And the spitting rock is completely out. So just to have a nice little interlude in our vlog, a bit of the shore here, since I took you on a tiny bit to the other harbor through our wood. But you can see here, all of this down here, which I've shared before when it's covered in ice and also high with water, that now this is all exposed. And so you can see all the little barnacles closing up and waiting for the sea to return. And there are some mussels down there. And see how the little puddles of salt water wait for the tide to come back. This is still a lovely type of tide to go out and do some mud locking or treasure hunting. And it's, as I said, it's a lovely warm day. Although we're meant to have cold weather again this come this weekend, New England always likes to remind us that it isn't yet April, so don't get too excited. In fact, many years we always joke about the uh, April Fool's snowstorm because not every year, but many years we get a sort of a freak snowstorm the first week of April, a day of snow. And then usually after that we have the next day, it'll be 60s and we'll have spring. 
but see how pretty to see the uh, soft sand in its rivered pattern, curvilinear pattern, and all the uh, kelp and seaweed clung tightly to the rock, now prostrate and drying in the sun, hoping the sea will return. And of course, the sea shall return. And you can see how big the spitting rock actually is as we approach it. I mean, it's quite tall. I only reach about, just about to the high water mark. And the gulls are out. They love this time because as it drains more and more, there are so many delicious little bivalve treats for them to just have a taste. I just love seeing all the rocks exposed, littered like some giant was walking past and emptied out his pockets and here they've landed. But that must have been eons ago. <laughs> Fluffy clouds. It's a bit windy. Hopefully you can hear what I'm saying. A warm, not quite spring day in New England with the tide going out. All right, let's get back to more of this week's video. And now for a little Una update. She's still quite alone because she just doesn't seem to want to bond with the chicks, but she still enjoys living in luxury of mink stoles and uh, sitting on sofas. So I guess Una is going to be a one quail kind of quail. Well, thank you for joining me this week. I hope you had fun. I know I did. Uh, it was nice to get out to Country Garden and into the greenhouse and get some house plants and some other growing things to have fun and plant. Uh, of course, it's always good to try to get artwork done, so I hope you are enjoying my current series of the, the portraits of ladies and their pets. And uh, it was nice, too, to have a quick little run into the woods when the rain was coming and then a chance to go down onto the shore as the flats were just starting to uh, appear. So I hope you enjoyed another week here. And I look forward to uh, seeing you again in the chats. And uh, I guess I should do a plug for my Patreon channel as well. Uh, if uh, you would like to join my Patreon channel, I'll put it somewhere in here. Uh, we have a virtual village where you can come and chat with us. Uh, it's basically like the premieres here, but you can just pop in whenever you like and chat and leave messages and share videos and things. Um, so check that out if you like. If not, I'm certainly happy to have you uh, return weekly to my YouTube channel. And I'm really enjoying this uh, online adventure. All right, well, I will see you all in uh, the chats or the comments or on my pa Patreon channel, whichever. And uh, remember, stay creative. Thank you again. Cheers. <laughs>